This is Consuming Fire Radio. Listening, you're listening to this evening, and this here is Evangelist Rock Evangelist Mike Bradford here from Web City, Missouri, and we have a special guest here this evening. It is Evangelist uh, Christopher Ayers. And Christopher, are you there, dear sir? Uh, yes, I am, brother. How you doing, brother Mike? Real, real, real good. You know, it's an it's a blessing and honor to have you here this evening and uh, we'll be bringing you on here in a minute and you can just have the mic and you can preach and teach whatever the Holy Ghost wants you to say or do or if you have any music to play or anything you, you just go right ahead you do what you uh, are led to do by the Holy Spirit but you know folks this is the day and the hour that we are living in and we have got to be about the Father's business we've got to be about kingdom building and not building our own kingdom but building the kingdom of God because the return of our Lord Jesus Christ is near nobody knows the time the day or the hour but all the signs of the time are pointing towards it and you know we're gonna have to go through some stuff but hey guess what when we're born again and living obedient and to him and have a repentive lifestyle then we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ we are covered by the Father, we are His, his sons and daughters of His, and that's what's so important. So at this time, I'm going to bring you Evangelist Christopher Ayers. Christopher, go right ahead, Minister Christopher Evangelist. Well, hello to all the uh, wonderful listeners out there. Uh, well, will everyone under the sound of my voice say Hallelujah, and let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm honored to be a feature guest here tonight. And I want to uh, uh, refer to the scripture back in, over in uh, uh, 2 Timothy, uh, third chapter, uh, uh, first verse through the fifth. And it goes like this. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemer, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, ungiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, hasty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. The Bible tells you to turn away from these type of people. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give you a, a, a sort of an a example, an illustration of uh, uh, having the, uh, the um, denying the power, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Now, as I always minister all the time, plug into the source, which is Jesus Christ. Because if you want to get power to be victorious, you have to plug into the source. Now, say, for instance, you take a TV cord and put it by on the floor right next to the outlet, the electrical outlet. The TV cord is in a ready position, but it has no power until you plug that plug plug into that that uh, electrical uh, circuit down here. Then you will not get no power. That TV will not come on at all. And for us to be victorious, we have to plug into the source, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, you know, there's a lot of tragedies 
that's going on in this country. And we, as Christians, should get more on fire for the Lord so that we can lead other individuals in the way of our Lord and Savior. And see, um, we want to ask ourselves, what is wrong with our nation? Well, we have the shootings in the schools. We have the gang, the drug activity. And we ask ourselves, what is wrong with our country, our, our nation? Well, our youths are killing each other. They have no value for human life. The Bible and the Scripture has already predicted these troubling times, which Second uh, Timothy uh, three fit, uh, one to five, which I just uh, read to you. But the problem that we have with a lot of our youth, especially our young men, first of all, not having God Almighty in their lives. I'll say second will be not having the proper supervision and discipline in their lives. They did not receive love as a child. Without love, there's hate. So they just don't care. Not having both parents in their lives, so the street become their home. Ungodly rap music, which leads to many to gangs and drugs. Also, too much TV time. Jesus said Matthew 15, chapter 18 to 19, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. So if you pump garbage in, garbage will surely come out. He goes on to say, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornication, thieves, theft, rather, false witness and blasphemy. There are too many single mothers raising young men. There's a lack of a role model of a dad in the home to help the boys navigate and suppress their destructive behavior. Boys pursue ultimates in the forms of male dominance spheres normally found in gangs, not in God. You know that uh, when there's a constant diet of hopelessness, it will darken their mental abilities and make them believe that their future is doomed and they will therefore develop self-destructive behavior patterns as so many of our youth are currently exhibiting. Ask yourself, when have gangs and thug life produced anything positive? So now we have the situations um, in the schools. Um, Shootings in the schools have been taking place um, for many years now. Uh, it started with the school shooting because of songs that I... Uh, here in the United States, the first school shooting massacre happened in July 26th of 1764, where four American Indians entered the schoolhouse near present-day Green Castle, Pennsylvania, shot and killed a schoolmaster... Enoch Brown and killed nine or ten children. Again in 1853, Louisville, Kentucky, student Matthew Ward bought a pistol in the morning, went to the school and killed the schoolmaster. Mr. Butler, as a revenge for what he thought was excessive punishment of his brother the day before. Researchers found that killers do not snap, they plan, they acquire weapons. These children take a long, considerate path towards violence. So you see, school shootings started 250 years ago. Preventive measures have not sunk in or seriously happened to prevent the senseless tragedy. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And we as uh, Christians need to get more on fire. You had uh, people in the... Uh, and the Martin Luther King era and everything, uh, they took to the street. They got many, many thousands and thousands of marchers marching for a cause. Our preachers need to get out. Our church people need to get on the street, do like John the Baptist um, or Stephen. Uh, get out here and, and minister to the helpless and the, and the, and the dying.
die in this dying world. And um, um, is there any question that you need to ask me over there, brother Mike? No, not at the present time, dear brother. You're oh. just you're just tracking with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Amen. So now we have, and see, we don't want to get complacent like Jonah did. Jonah was uh, was the only recorded prophet who refused God's commission. He initially chose to disobey God's command. He was thrown in the sea, and God appointed a great uh, fish to swallow him up. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So let me tell you, you know, people refusing to do what God has called us to do will always resort to consequences that will make one uncomfortable. So after he prayed to God from the belly of the fish, the Lord uh, spoke to the fish and it vomited him out upon the dry land. See, because Jonah now was delayed, then he prayed. You know, prayer changes things, people. God gave him a second chance like he does a lot of us. And the people of Nineveh turned from their evil ways. They repented. Hallelujah. See, that is the power of God. Because no man can stand in the way of progress in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, people. People directed by God may be delayed, abused, threatened, even persecuted. But their message is unstoppable. The message that God had for the people of Nineveh was unstoppable. Glory be to God. But however, Jonah returned to disobedience when he hoped for the destruction of the city of Nineveh. Amen. We have um, uh, are, you, are you with me, brother? Yes, I'm right here, brother. You just go yeah, amen, man. You're 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 just really really following what the Lord is telling you. Hallelujah. Because today, you know, uh, we got this thing uh, in our country. Another problem we have in the country is uh, the gay, uh, homosexual. Come on, uh, come on, Brady, behavior, man. the homosexual behavior, uh, which uh, has has uh, has taken seventeen states plus uh, uh, Washington D.C. And, you know, as I re looked at uh, those 17 states, out of 17, 11 of them are New England states. Yep. And, and I see how rebellion the New England states was the 13 colonies. Yes, they were. And they rebelled against, they rebelled against King George. That's right. Now they try to rebel against God. Come on. Well, <laughs> wake up, people. Come on, preach They it. rebelled against King George. Now they're rebelling against God. And want other people to join in that rebellion. But we as Christians, hallelujah, we as Christians should be on moral fire. Come on. Because I truly believe that we have them outnumbered, but they outshine us. Come on. Uh -oh. Can you imagine that? Uh -oh. Imagine that. They outshine us, but we outnumber them. Come on. And we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthened us. That's right. That's right. So now you have in the book of First uh, uh, Corinthians, I think it's the sixth chapter, the uh, uh, ninth through the eleventh verse, I believe. I'm trying to stroll over here and try to find this scripture real fast. And it tells you, for uh, uh, plain as daylight. Um, Do you, do you not know that the unrighteous, whoa, there they go, with the Come first on. word. I mean, the, the word right here, unrighteous, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Come do on. not be deceived. Neither fornicator, nor idolater, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomies, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor rowers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know how you can make that more clear, okay? Everybody's trying to go to heaven, but they ain't doing what's necessary that the scriptures here in the Bible tell you you have to do. Come on. Uh, and, and then you go over to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, uh, the third verse down here. It says, but fornications and all uncleanliness uh -oh. or covenants 
let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Come on. Oh, that's word right there, saints. That's, that's heavy. You know, he was talking hey, about amen, the saints. Amen, amen. Neither filthiness, nor foolish joking, talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather given a thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, that's homosexuality. Come on. That's abortionist. No unclean person, nor covenant man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of of Christ and of God. Come on. It says, once again, it says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. We have so much catastrophe with our weather throughout the, throughout the world, matter Come of fact. Maybe just in the United States, we feel it more over here because we're over here. But the earthquakes, the storms, uh, mudslides, the fires, uh, that take place every year. Come on. It's getting bad out here. <laughs> People are just getting bad out here. But the thing about it is, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. That's it. That they may enter through the gate into the new city. Come on. The new city is called Jerusalem. Preach Hallelujah. It. That's right. Because a lot of people, you got to understand this, if you do not overcome, uh -oh. Revelation 2 7 says, you will not eat of the tree of life. That's it. Revelation uh, uh, two eleven says, "If you do, if you will not be hurt by the second death." Revelation oh. three five, you will not be clothed in you will not be clothed in white garment, and your name will not be written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation three twelve, you will not be made a pillow in the temple That's of it. God. You will not be given the name of God nor the city of God, nor the new name of Jesus written upon you if you do not overcome. That's right. And if you do not overcome, you will not sit at the throne of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You will not. That's so, right. we must do this. Matthew seven, thirteen to 14. Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate. Now, most churches have a middle aisle. Now, let's imagine that aisle as being narrow. Come on. Now, many of us may start on this narrow and small path. We're trying to get to the back of that church. Just imagine that being heaven there. That's right. Now, many of us start on this narrow, uh, small path, but somehow we get distracted and become disobedient to the Word of God. He goes on to say, For wide is the gate and and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Come on. And many enter through it. Destructive behaviors, which are found in 1 Corinthians, which I just read, 9 to 10, and Ephesians 5, 3 to 6. Mom. Yeah, you right. go on and tell us, for small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now let me tell you about a few. In a time of Noah, there was probably thousands of people on this planet, but out of that flood situation, only a few survived, and that was only eight. That's right. In the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities, because of disobedience and homosexuality, uh -oh. only three people survived that. That's right. Couldn't even find, couldn't even find ten people. That's right. That had a conscience of God. Come on. And a faith in God Almighty to say, hey, listen, I repent. So the God is, is waiting for us to, to repent. He, he don't want anybody to be lost. That's right. But mankind, they go ahead. So now as we walk through this straight and narrow path of life, our goal is to stay away from the temptations of this world. Because in Revelations 21, 27 clearly tells us nothing impure will enter it. Nor anyone who does what is shamefully, shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's right. So as we walk through this straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life, our goal is to study and obey the word of God. 
We must pick up our cross and follow Jesus. We must be the imitators of Jesus. Read your Bible, people. Come on. Uh -oh. Also, our goal is to expire, to inspire Come on. others before we expire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christopher, Minister, I mean, Evangelist Christopher, you, you mean you're telling the people out here that they've got to read the Word of God? You got to read the Word of God. You mean they that's don't, the only you, message? Because it's like in my song you will on. find on YouTube called B I B L E, basic information before leaving Come Earth. On. If you don't want to face that fiery lake of burning fire, if you want your name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Preach it. you got to read. You got to get on. You see, you got, the renewing of your mind. Ask yourself. Come on. Is is it, it, the world's worth my salvation? You have to break free from the mold of sin by the renewing of the mind Come on. through Jesus Christ. That's right. You got and, God will re and God rewards those who diligently seek Him. That's it. So for you to diligently seek Him, you have to get in that Word. Yeah, that's right. Amen. You know, there was a, there was a, uh, I'll give you an uh, understanding of how a lot of people are. When people have learned something uh, uh, over and over and being taught by the world's way of thinking, they are programmed to go that way. If you want to change that and align it back to God's truth permanently, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the constant feeding of the truth of God. Amen. Because, you know, because the Romans 12, 2 tell you, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, ah, we just got to get on more fire. We just got to get that fire going. Hallelujah. You know, you know uh, <laughs> Evangelist Christopher... You know, the Lord showed me, uh, not to interrupt you, you, you're going real good. I just want to interject in here real quick. You're talking about the fire. You know, we've got too many ministries that are pilot lights. You Amen. Know, a pilot light, you know, it does, the pilot light, when the gas gets turned on, it'll ignite the whole thing. But you've got to uh, be a doer of that word, put boots to the ground, and get out there and start a do, being a doer of the word, get in out there in the hedges and byways, like you said earlier in your message about getting out into the streets and getting out where the people are at and minister the word of God and be talking with them. And that is so, so important. Back back to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and Brother Mike, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you there. You know, um, as I was saying about the uh, abortionist uh, situation yes. or the homosexual, you know, we as Christians uh, know about these things and we hear about it uh, through the news media or whatever throughout this country, which is an abomination to God. But James uh, 4 4 tells us, You adulterers and adulterers. Amen. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enemy with God? Come on. Who Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes him himself an enemy of God. You can see how many people have made themselves an uh, enemy with God. I don't care what governor, what, what president, or whatever. How can you let another man steal your salvation? How mm. can you let another human being drag you down into the, bit, uh, uh, the pit of hell? How can you allow them to do this to you? You've got to get on fire for the Lord. That's it. And like I tell people over and over, John the Baptist, even Stephen, you know, they would, they would be headed, you right. know, but that's all right. Get to go that's home. all right. It's all good. Yes, God got them in his hands, so hallelujah. Amen. You know, uh, you know and then uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, oh, she cheers on the situation, even Obama. Yeah. Uh, have cheered on the situation with uh, uh, the homosexuality. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the Attorney uh, General. Uh, yeah, Ashford. Uh, Holder, you know? Yeah, Holder. Uh, yes. they all in favor of this. But how can you let, allow them to tell you, as Christians, Come on. Uh, 
how to govern your lives or whatever. These people will have to face that, that wrath of God. They will face it. That's it. Every knee will bow, every tongue confess That's it. that he's Lord. Hallelujah. You know, what and what you're saying, it, it, everything you've said is a thousand percent true. People don't realize the reason why this nation is in the situation that it's in is because it's turned its back from God and it's put themselves on the pedestals, you know, of the throne of God. It's all about self-centeredness, uh, you know, and that's what's going on in the capital today. It's been run by the uh, elite that is self-centered, going to run it their way and, you know, not God's way. I mean, the homosexuals and the uh, abortionists are paying lobby, lobbying there in Washington all these thousands. They don't, people don't realize how much thousands and millions of dollars are being lobbied in the Congress and in the, in the Senate and uh, everywhere else to get these laws passed through. And the thing is, like you said earlier, is we don't want to stand up, stand up being bold for Christ. Because uh, we're in, a uh, lot of people are in fear. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, upset uh, upset people. No, we're supposed to be bold as a lion for what you believe. Because out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And you know, when it's in your heart, it's in your hands. So you're gonna uh -huh. go out, you're gonna go out and start doing it if it's in your heart. And people today, I, I hate, and I'm not knocking churches whatsoever. But it's 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 getting ridiculous because it's just return like a revolving door, you know. You you go here where I live and where, probably where you live, in the city. There's uh, churches on every corner like a convenience store, and you would okay. think you would think with all these churches here in America, we would be in a better situation than what we are. No, we're not. Uh -huh. it, it's, Amen. it's because it's a revolving door, and they're only uh, just. They're not ministering outside the four walls. They're not out here where Jesus, he he, he went out and ministered in, into the uh, marketplace. He was at Walmart. He was at everywhere that people were at. That's where he was at uh, ministering the word of God. John the Baptist Amen. was the same way. He was out where the people were at. And, he, and it was so much that it got them all, you know, turned the apple cart upside down, so to speak. And they came against him and he got his head lopped off. But he didn't care. Because he knew, without a shadow of a doubt, he was going to be at the foot uh, of Jesus at the throne of God at that time, you know. So, you know, it's, it's just like with me with this, with these so-called FEMA camps that they've got throughout the nation, and everybody's, you know, all in fear of all this stuff. Hey, I, I and I kind of people are going to be this guy's nuts, but I'm going to just tell you where my heart's at. I embrace it because uh, where I am. Uh, death here upon the earth I am present before the Lord so you know I he's not going to let me feel the sting of death whatsoever just like John the Baptist and all them before that sword or that guillotine lopped their head off they didn't even feel a thing because their their spirit was already gone out of their body the Lord, Amen. The Lord God already took them out and uh, just that you know what you seen was the, the uh, front porch get cut off, so to speak, of the house, you know. You, you didn't, uh, the real them didn't die. The, the real them, you know, people don't realize, I don't care if you get your head lopped off or not, you're going to spend somewhere for eternity. Folks, this uh -huh. is, like you've been saying, the choices that we're making each day, Christopher, are eternal choices where we're going to spend Amen. eternity. Could you elaborate on that, please? Eternal choices? Eternal choices. Yes. You know, um, our, the eternal choices that we have, we're going to face, like I said, with the, uh, either you uh, uh, spend that time eternal oh with uh, our Lord, or you don't face that fiery lake of burning suffering. Those are the two choices you have yeah. eternally. Okay. So now, if you don't repent. Uh oh. You know, a lot of fast food places have a sign outside their door. Come on. Before you stop there, no shoes, no shirts, no service. Yeah, there But let me see. No repentance, no salvation, uh, no heaven. Come on, preach it now. And what happened is repentance, and let me give you a little bit of understanding on repentance. 
Repentance is a change of the mind accompanied by regret and change of conduct, heart and consciousness. Also to make a radical turn from one's way of life. Come on. Towards doing that which the Bible says pleases God. It is mentioned in the Bible over a hundred times. It brings healing into the world. It reaches the throne of the Lord and it brings redemption. So seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. That's in Isaiah 55, 6 to 7. For Amen. repentance will surely spare us from God's judgment. Now, once you got that repentance in, in order, then salvation comes. Come on. Because salvation saves us from the wrath of God's judge of sin, causes our sins, because our sins have separated us from God, and the consequences of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. Also, deliverance from danger and suffering. The act of saving or protecting from harm, risk, loss, or destruction, deliverance from power and penalty of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. First, First Thessalonians 5, 9, but God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 3, 19, repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Now, if you want your sins blotted out, Come on. repent. That's it. And Revelation 22, 11 tells us, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He is who he is who is filthy, let him be filthy still. Right. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. But Jesus says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. We must arm ourselves with this knowledge and remember that repentance is available to all mankind. To all mankind, hallelujah. Amen. But see, you know, I, I remember a, a, a friend of mine, he and his uh, his wife were sitting in a restaurant eating, and they were talking about how slick uh, their son was. Uh -huh. And he was a very crafty uh, guy and everything. They said, you know, he, he is so slick, he can make a rabbit believe he's not a rabbit. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah, and but see, but that ain't all what he could do. Come on. He could turn around and make that rabbit actually believe he's in the rabbit suit. Come on. So now that's what Satan does, is what I call a Alzheimer's Christian. Yes. Because the devil does that. The devil wants you to think you're not who you are. I am more than a Christ. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. Come on. Then he turns around and make you believe you are an Alzheimer Christian, which uh, char the characteristic will be lack the ability to discern the Word of God, lack the ability and knowledge to press on, and lack the, lack the ability to know right from wrong. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's Amen. an Alzheimer Christian. Let me repeat it again. The devil wants you to think you are not who you are. Then he turns around and make you believe you are all time a Christian. That's it. The lack, because you will lack the ability to discern the word of God, lack the ability and knowledge to press on, lack the ability to know right from wrong. Phew. That's some deep stuff. That's it. Because Romans eight thirty seven say, I am more than a conqueror through him who loves us. Come on. Now, now the Greek word, conqueror, it, 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 the word uh, more than a conquer is a Greek uh, uh, compound word, which means to over conquer completely without any real threat to personal life or health. Woo. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, so I, 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 I encourage everybody to delight itself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thou heart. Delight thou self. Come on. Seek the Lord. Why he may be found. That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know. Uh, and also, also uh, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal 
their That's it. land. That's it. He told the children of Israel many a time, turn from your wicked ways, and I'll be your God, and you will be my people. He told them that he would send curses or blessings. Amen. Those curses, those curses and blessings, well, the blessing part of it is, I will heal your land. That's it. Amen. So yeah. you want to get a land healed? You want to get your household healed? Your finances healed? Come on. You want to get your children healed? You want to get your business that you're trying to accomplish healed? Come on. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent. That's it. Salvation is re- salvation is knocking at the door. Yes, it is. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All things will be added unto you. See, that's the thing. People don't realize it'll, it. all things will be added. If you yeah, put, all things. All things. You know, they, uh, <laughs> you know my big pet peeve, uh, Christopher, is uh, we have in the body of Christ today, I call them specialist Christians. They want to specialize in, uh, you know, uh, being an, uh, not an evangelist, be, being a prophet or... They want to be uh, uh, in, uh, talking on end times prophecy, you know, uh, stuff of this nature. But the word uh, of the Lord in, in Matthew 28, Jesus left a commandment. The commandment is, you're going to have to do this. It's no if ands, or buts. It says, go mm-hmm. ye preach the gospel to out throughout the whole world, to all everybody. You know, and, and today... We got people that are wanting to just specialize in stuff. And I talk to people all over the world every day. And the main things that they're after is how to get saved, stay saved, and how to stay delivered uh, from demons and stuff out of their life. That's all they're interested in. They're not interested in prosperity. They're not interested in anything. They know God is Jehovah Jireh, their provider. They know that he is their healer. He, they know all this stuff, and this is what is so sad that here in America, that's all uh, that a lot of ministries want to want to specialize in, instead of being spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, which Jesus left his disciples, which is us, and the disciples that the twelve, eleven that were there, to carry on after he died and was resurrected. You go preach the gospel. And, you know, I, the other thing, and I'll say this for the folks that are out here, and uh, kind of, I kind of, you know, in a loving way, I'm shaming the people that are not sharing the Word of God in love, making a correction, because for 21 years I was out in the world drugging and drinking, and no one, I mean, no one came up to me and witnessed to me about Jesus Christ. That is sad. Mm. That is sad. Amen. And I had my mother and my grandmother praying for me, and it was the prayers of those and probably other people that they had praying for me and other intercessors throughout the world that were praying for me. And uh, I came to Christ in a treatment center, and he came to me by spirit, and I surrendered my life to him and been walking with him now going on 27 years. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about a repentive lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle of holiness, because the word says, "Without without holiness, no man will see the Lord." That's so, right. So Amen. You know, that means walking. You know, yes, I do fall down. Yes, I do bump my head. You know, and I get into my th- stinking thinking, as I call it, which is sin. Amen. I, I understand. I, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get into that, and the Lord, Lord, the Holy Ghost comes to me and says, "Hey, you need to get out of this. Your your thinking's wrong here, son." This is, you got to get into the Word. Here's the Word. Here's the Scriptures. And I have to reprogram my computer brain and, okay. and get that reprogrammed. That's how I, I tell people a lot of times. That's the antivirus of taking care of the viruses of the world that's in my brain is by the Word of God. And, you know, I'm a new creature with a new feature with Jesus Christ. And uh, you've got to, po- folks, and he's saying it here too, You've got to surrender your will and your life. Like it says over there in Luke 9, Jesus said to his disciples, you'll have to deny yourself, follow me. I mean, pick up your cross and follow me. Well, in other words, deny yourself. That means get out of your self-will. You know, get rid of your self-will. 
pick up your cross that means give me all your problems and let's go on do do some work you know and people don't want to do that they want to keep their will or they'll only give Jesus when they get born again they'll give him maybe 80% and keep 20 you can't do that folks right you got to give him 110% and yes like I said I fall down bump my head uh, with thoughts and everything but I am quick to repent and make it right and if I've offended people I go back and I and I fix it and uh, that's what the Lord has called us to do and that's what we do but go ahead dear uh, evangelist Christopher um, what's it going to tell you um, we get into um, the um, times when uh, sort of uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 16 to 18 and it's going to tell you about the rapture a different process that will take place, the rapture, uh, the tribulation, uh, meridian, right. um, Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. You know, that scripture reminds me of several different denominations that have predicted the return of Jesus Christ. Come on. Here you have Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus Christ himself said, no one knows the day or the hour of the return of the Son That's of Man, it. not even the angels. And what happened is, how can thousands of people, 1843 and 1844 twice, October the 22nd of 1843, it was predicted by a denomination, and over 100 thousand people gave their homes away to sinners and waited for the return of Jesus Christ. Now, if they was reading their Bible, see, this, this, is, this is a big problem. Come on. They don't read their Bible. They go to a church and listen, and Come on. they become come, uh, complacent with uh, uh, hanging with Brother Joe and Sister Mary, and they repeat the same thing that they didn't heard, but they ain't truly read it. They haven't opened up their mind Come on. to really read it and everything, because they probably tell you, well, I'm so busy because of work, children, uh, activities, or whatever like that. But they really haven't really got into the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And um, so how can you let uh, someone tell you that he was going to return when that scripture in itself says it was uh, uh, a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead will rise first. And... and uh, um, these denominations have proclaimed. There's one denomination that have done it so many times yep. uh, that uh, I don't know how the people stay. Matter of fact, the, the one I was speaking at first, uh, it was called a great uh, disappointment, and a lot of people fell away from that membership uh, for quite some time as well. But, uh, you know, and that's time-seeking, by the way. Yes, it that's is. That's time-seeking. That's not of God, first of all. Virtue and lied, and you're time speaking, and <laughs> Come so, on. and then it said, "Then who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord." Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And you have in um, the scriptures about the tribulation reveals that the uh, Antichrist will sign a seven-year peace treaty with Israel, which marks the beginning of the Great Tribulation. And three and a half years later, he will break the treaty. Second Thessalonians reveals that the Antichrist will seat himself on the throne in the temple of God and proclaim himself as God. Revelation 13, 5. And there was given unto him a, a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue for and two, 40 and two months. 40 and two months. Amen. So that's three and a half years, I believe it is. <laughs> that's right. God will establish the limits within which the Antichrist will be allowed to speak and operate. God will allow him to utter his blasphemy to bring the rage of Satan to his culmination on earth for three and a half years. Yes. Amen. Amen. Then you have, uh, oh, then, then the next uh, uh, move is Armageddon. 
Revelation 19, 11 to 21, right. reveals the battle of Armageddon and Christ's second coming, events that mark the close of the tribulation, also the defeat of the beast and false prophets. The false prophets. That, right. If you watch the TV show, uh, the TV movie, uh, uh, Left Behind, yeah. and I, I've, I've seen another one just recently, uh, uh, you know, a lot of pastors will be left behind because uh -oh. they're not sitting up there giving that gospel. To, uh, you got, you... It got it watered down <laughs> just to please the people. Come on. I'm not laughing yeah, at you, but it's the, the truth, people. brother. And, and, and what happened is, left behind and say, I don't want to be left behind. I trust you. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> That's going to be some tough times. Then you got, then the next move, you guys, the millennium, which will be about a thousand years. Yeah. Um, it starts with the binding of the devil and casting him into the bottomless pit yes. for a, a thousand years. It will be all golden ages of righteousness and spiritual prosperity. Amen. will happen for that, you know, hundred, for that thousand years. And, and those who uh, had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, for they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Come on. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, you, you really touched on a subject there about pastors. I, I've always uh, believed that, and I've seen that where in the spirit where you're going to have the, you know, the the catching away, however they want to call it, the second coming, whatever. The Lord came back and and took his people, and uh, you know, then these pastors were left with all these other parishioners that followed him. Don't you think there's going to be a lynching? I think. Oh, a lynch. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lynching involved. They're going to st uh, throw throw a rope. You know, they're going to uh, put a rope up here and uh, and hang the guy, or try to, you know, uh -huh. for uh, believing it. But they're held accountable for their own uh, walk with the Lord, not not know a pastor. See, that's why I tell people, you're responsible for you. Even though he's saying it, and we're saying it, the folks that are out here listening and the archives are live, you should be following along to everything that we're saying, and if it's not right and not of God, then I encourage you to send an email to me. And Amen. We, you know, Amen. and, and we'll, uh -huh. we'll make a correction where corrections do. But you know, there is people that uh, just take the gospel truth from what the minister says and never crack the uh, the Bible open during the service. I always uh -huh. follow, follow along, you know, with the uh, minister. And uh, if they're uh, in error, I'll get up and say something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. And, and see, they be ready to escort you out of there then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's so true. It, it's, uh, they're, they're, I hate to say it, you know, and you, you did touch on the truth, all of it. But when, you know, the, uh, the flood came along, uh, there was a lot of people that could have, uh, you know, got into that ark, but they so chose to throw tomatoes and potatoes and and think uh, Noah was a nutcase and his family until the water started rising All up. Right. And you know something Thank about you. that, dear brother, and it's not written in the Bible, but I, I this is off off the word. But just think this as an individual. Here you uh -huh. preached you preached hard for 120 years, and you're building this ark. Did the right? Uh huh. Uh, uh, Pacifics of what the uh, uh, blueprint of the Lord's was and when the day that he shut it and all the rain and the lightning and the thunder and the wind and everything and all these people outside screaming you know as a fleshly man Noah wanted to go and let him in but he couldn't right you know because they had a chance to repent and uh -huh. they could have been right along beside uh, Noah and his sons and uh, building the ark, but they chose to ridicule him. And we see that going on in the body of Christ today where we have other ministries ridiculing other ministries or ministers and bagging on them instead of, uh, you know, building the kingdom of God. Just, they're building their kingdom by what they're preaching. And uh, it's, it's all about the kingdom of God building in instead of 
building the uh, first church of the deep freeze kingdom, you know. Okay. Christopher, go yeah, ahead. You, you know, I, I can I can imagine that situation with Noah as well. Yeah. And because uh, uh, you know, like you say, it's about 120 years, and um, he, you know, he he faced all that ridicule. Yeah. And 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 even if he had opened that door, they were bombarded, Come and on. it would have been a catastrophe. You know, when people fear things, yeah. they will run over it and tear up something. And he, yeah. the Bible tell you was a, you know he was an honorable man. Yes, uh, he, he trusted in God and everything. And the thing about it is, not only him, but his wife, yes, and and his daughter-in-laws and his son, they trusted. They you know for 120 years you constantly building, they constantly nagging you and everything. Come on, they didn't show that none of them broke out of camp from him and 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 really cured him. Come Just on. like you had. Uh, uh, was it Miriam uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Moses' uh, sister and, and, and brother, you know, sort of ridicured him. That's right. But there was no one ridiculed him, and they they, they stayed, they had a mission, and they yes, stayed they true to that mission. Yes, they did. And they were blessed. And, and, and see, and the word blessed, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to take you where Jesus okay. says, uh, in that Matthew, the, uh, uh, the fifth chapter, blessed are the for in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets, who were before you, and see what happened was they, they, uh, they, uh, they was persecuting Noah. That's right. <laughs> but it simply says that reviled and persecuted for they, for uh, and say all kind of evil against you and falsely for my sake. That's it. Hey, he was blessed. Him and his family was blessed. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. So. And you know, people want to get them blessings and everything, but they, <laughs> they, well, uh, you know, they're not on fire for the, the correct blessings and stuff. So. Well, and also, you know, for a blessing, there has to be the right choices to make. You, you got a cost. Okay. To pay. You got a cost to pay. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's a cost for that blessing. It's for obedience of what the word of uh, God has to say. It's not what you want to do when you want to do it. You just got to do what the Lord tells you to do when he tells you to do it. And you carry it out to your best of your ability by the leading of the Holy Ghost leading, leading us in doing so. And we will, we will be blessed. And we will be blessed Amen. people. But if I get into my stinking thinking, which is sin, and, uh -huh. and then do it my way, then guess what? It's not going to work. It would be like a... a as Jesus said, a bag filled with holes, all the money's going to fall out, you know. It, okay. It's, you know, it's all going to it's all going to be null and void. It's not going to be what the Lord's wanting uh, done, and that's you know a total sin because He can't bless disobedient children, and we've got to stay obedient under the call the best we can. Yes, we are humans. Yes, we do miss it now and then, but. For the most part, our hearts are right before the Lord because He knows our hearts. He knows uh, every thought that runs through our brain. You know, Amen. And it's so important because I tell people, you know, everything, this a broadcast is being heavenly recorded right now. Every th jot and tittle that we say and do here upon this earth is being recorded by angelic beings that are watching us. And around us, we can't see them unless the Lord reveals them. But they're, they're around us recording, and they're the ones that bring the blessings. They're the ones that, uh, they're only activated by the Word of God and by faith of the Word of God in Amen. the individual's heart. So, you know, that's so important. And uh, it's, it's about the kingdom of, I can't stress it enough, folks. It, it's about the kingdom of God like evangelists. Christopher a Avery said, you know, uh, it's it's all about uh, Jesus Christ 
it's all about him it's not about us in no way and when we get into that self-centeredness then I hate to say this this is pretty blunt but you're a Satanist folks when you're in self-centeredness because uh -huh. uh, you're serving Satan you can't serve two masters Amen. And just what Jesus told his disciples you can only serve one or the other you uh -huh. cannot serve two masters so when you're in self-will you are serving Satan and his kingdom of darkness and so that's one thing that I uh, encourage folks is to if you haven't turned your will over to the, uh, the Lord you need to do that because really you really look at it how can you become, be a Christian if you're in self will you cannot be walking with the Lord in your self centeredness because self centeredness is nothing but pride which is the spirit of Leviathan which is mm -hmm. a controlling factor of stronghold in your life. That's a whole nother <laughs> that's a whole nother topic within itself. But okay, uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, you're you're so true and everything. You, you go ahead and, and uh, go on if the Lord's leading you to say anything else. Uh, about oh, this Christopher, we our 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 old self has to die. Right. Compromise will not get us into heaven, people. There's a saying through one denomination of the church, once saved, always saved. Oh, yeah. That is scripture. That is nowhere in the scripture. Come on. Because <laughs> to, uh, to be almost saved is to be totally lost. We go to Second Peter uh, 3 9, tells us the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Now Romans six twenty three, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I encourage everyone, try Jesus. Hallelujah, try Jesus. Now if you don't like him, the devil, the devil will gladly take you back. I just tell you this. Why Jesus? You see, the devil is not worried about you when you're on his team, because he got you already. He just worried about those ones that that hallelujah and on fire for the Lord and, and doing the Lord's will. He ain't worried about the ones that uh, uh, <clears throat> with the alcoholism and drug abuse and, and and the uh, uh, homosexuality and the horror mongers and the uh, and the thieves and the murderers and the robbers. He's not worried about them. They're on his team. That's and right. like a baseball, football team. Your coach know where you're at. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your coach definitely know where you're at. So he doesn't worry about you when you try to go and get on another team that's good. That's right. <laughs> doing, the, doing the right thing. That's what he worried then. Because you didn't see all this. You didn't see a lot of his little tricks when we were in his camp. <laughs> so we tell him. You know, uh, one thing I, I, I see how baseball player, the pitcher and the catcher. Yeah. Now, when that pitcher and that catcher, when that whole team, when you train them to another team, you have to change those signals that the uh, that the Come pitcher on. and the catcher have and everything. Right. So, the same thing here. When you, you when when them, you've been released from them demons and everything, because I think the Bible tell you when when uh, when. Uh, one demon is left, he goes and brings seven more. It's hard for you to kick that uh, that uh, ungodliness, whatever you're involved Come in. On. And uh, he comes back with uh, seven more. And, you know, when Satan got you tied down there in his corner and everything, and then you get out and you, you, you travel with God and God's people and everything, uh, he's, he's got he got to change... Uh, uh, he worried about you giving the secrets, <laughs> how to fight him and everything. So that's right. Yeah, how to how to how to fight him. You and know, uh, and one of the biggest tricks that uh, one of the biggest lies that Satan has uh, put on Christians is that you got more time. Oh yeah. And that's one of the biggest lies. I think that is the biggest lie right there that you have more time. Yeah. You hear one moment, you go on another. And by the way, James, I think the book of James, 
Uh, it's just right. like a vapor. You're here for a moment and you're gone. There's a lot of people you know? last night, evangelists, a lot of people last night didn't wake up, you know? Yeah, yeah. They thought they yeah. had they had a lot of time. You know, a, a year ago, February 28th, I had a, uh, my heart valve went out on my heart and I was laying on the shower room floor of the YMCA and there wasn't nobody in the locker room, nobody around except God and the angels. And Amen. All, all I said was, God help me. And there was two beings that I knew were angels that stood me up, showered me off, rinsed me off, and I got dressed. And here I am, you know. But uh, I could go into later on testimony on that in another broadcast. But, you know, the furthest thing from my mind was the uh, Lord didn't even enter into it except, you know, help me. But I wasn't in fear because of my, I, I was right with the Lord, you see. Uh -huh. And when people, when they're dying, my son is in the military, and he said when their uh, soldier gets wounded or they're dying in the battlefield, they cry out to God, you know. And Amen. that's the main thing. They're, we're all hardwired with that in our spirits. But we have to be born again so we can enter into the kingdom of God and like you said, Chris, um, Evangelist Christopher, is uh, we have to repent of our sins. Are you listening here, folks? We have to repent of our sins and then just ask him to come into your heart and he'll make himself real unto you. That's how simple it was for me. Amen. I just had to say I was done living that way. I'm Amen. tired of this sin. I'm tired of living this way. I'm done. Amen. I was at my end's ropes. And when I said that, that's when the Lord came by spirit and then I gave my will and my life over to him and accepted him and repented of my sins, gave my will and my life over to him and then got born again. And then uh, sometime after that got uh, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So you know the full infilling of the Holy Ghost at that time. You know, and that's what is so important today. The people, like you said, Christopher, I can't, I, Lord's telling me to repeat this again. Life is nothing but a vapor. You don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes or the next five Amen. years or the next ten years. Uh -huh. we, have, we have no clue, but when you're walking with him, he will tell you everything you need to stay right. And you, he will protect his children. During what this is, and I'll say this in closing, uh, evangelist that and maybe you have something to iterate into this in closing but uh, what is getting ready to come on this nation if this nation does not repent Christians don't need to fear that are walking with the Lord and in and in, and in repentance that are walking a holy lifestyle before the Lord and they're praying they're seeking God and they're doing being a doer of the word not a hearer only there's nothing to fear but the ones that are lollygagging around and playing the church game, folks, you need to get right with the Lord tonight. And if you if you would, uh, Evangelist Christopher, could you kind of lead, lead somebody that's out there like that uh, to the to the Lord this evening? Uh, can you repeat that, Brother Mike? I said, could you, as somebody that is lollygagging around and, and thinking they've got all the time in the world, hey, I need to do a... Like the, uh, I've heard before, I got to sow some more of my wild oats out here, and then I'll, then I'll get right. And if you could just kind of lead lead somebody that is astray, or, or the Lord has been telling me there uh, there's uh, prodigal sons and daughters that are listening to this broadcast, kind of uh, show them the way back to the the pathway of Christ Jesus. You know, uh, I have uh, family members as well as, as friends, you know. Uh, you know, I've ministered to, and, um, some, and they just got a hold on them so tightly. Uh, but, you know, we just got to keep them in prayer, my brother. Exactly. And uh, hopefully one of these days that yoke will be uh, uh, knocked off of them. Yes. But uh, they... Um, they listen to the stinking thinking of this world. That's right. And um, and they uh, don't have a a clue to what 
what salvation is all about. Um, they don't have a clue to uh, how to get out of it, and a lot of them don't want to get in and get out of it because they they think all the pleasure of the world yes. is what it's all about, and uh, we just have to pray for them, brother. That's just have right. to pray for them. Could you lift that up in prayer for those people that are out there, please? Heavenly Father, God Almighty, uh, we thank you for this broadcast here tonight yes. and for the mighty listeners that have had the opportunity to hear uh, your message here tonight, Heavenly Father. And we stretch out our hands, Heavenly Father, towards heaven and ask and pray, Heavenly Father, those that have not come to, to love you and to understand you, that, dear Lord, that you will shake them, Heavenly Father, that you will quicken their steps, Heavenly Father, that you will cause them to understand that you are God Almighty and yes. there's none other than there's no name under heaven by which man can be saved. Hallelujah. We ask and pray that you will uh, give them peace in the midst of their storms and their valleys. Ask that you re 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 give them the ability to love one another as you love us, Heavenly Father. And we ask and pray that the words spoken here tonight will fall on the hearts of those who don't know you, those who have turned from you, and those who truly love and obey you. And Heavenly Father, we ask and pray that you can forgive each and every one of us for all our unrighteousness, all our sins, all our iniquities. We ask and pray that you create a new spirit in us, that we may worship and that we may serve you. Hallelujah. And uh, Heavenly Father, you are our creator. You are our master, our redeemer. You are our provider. We give you thanks, Father. Yes. And to your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for all that you have done for us yes, and Lord. blessed us with. We ask that you will forgive us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We do not want to tell the world that we are just blessed, but we will. We want to be highly favored. We do not want, just want to show the world that we are just Christians, but that we are devout Christians, Heavenly Father. And in closing, uh, the person who delights in the word of God will prosper in whatever he does. So yes. commit your life to the ministry of God yes, Lord. and change the world. To God be the glory. Yes. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Evangelist Christopher Ayers, if you could, could you give out a contact information of an email? That people can get a hold of you at to, uh, you know, have you come and speak, and if you want to give out, uh, I don't know if you have a PayPal account or anything. If you do, you can give that out where people can donate to your ministry that what you're doing, and uh, if you would please give that out, I'd appreciate it. Yes, my email is c airs a y e r s at live l i v e dot com. Once again, that would be C A Y E as in Edward R S at live L I V E dot com. And you will be able to find I have eight songs on YouTube. Um, the the main one will be Lord We Need You. Lord we need you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. I tell you I really appreciate you coming here this evening at this last minute of, uh, it was really inspired of the Lord to have this broadcast this is his first of many to come I really sense that by the leading of the Holy Ghost here this evening folks and uh, you've heard this uh, man of God he is a true man of God and his music you need to go over there and listen to it because he does have a uh, very anointed story in his music to tell that he's singing from his spirit and it's the spirit of the Lord upon it in Jesus name and folks uh, if you would just uh, keep him in your prayers keep us in your prayers and, and evangelist uh, Christopher Ayers if you would please stay on the line after we get done here I'd like to uh, convert with you a little bit more and okay um, uh, we're gonna do the outro and folks 
Now, I thank you so much for tuning in and being with us. And God bless you. Have a blessed evening. And if we don't come back, we'll see you on the other side. God Amen. Bless. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. This has been a Consuming Fire Radio audio production.